live from Bally's Atlantic City, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with red trim, fighting out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, by way of Cameroon. He weighed in at the junior welterweight limit of 140 pounds even. A 2,000 Olympian, his professional record stands at 16 wins, one defeat with nine wins, coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the challenger, right the IBF number one junior welterweight contender and known as the Black Panther, introducing her. across the ring on my right fighting out of the red corner the defending world champion wearing black trunks with silver trim proudly representing his hometown of brooklyn new york he weighed in at already 139 pounds his record stands at 23 wins one defeat five wins coming by way of knockout tonight he is making the first defense of his title ladies and gentlemen please welcome the ibf junior welterweight champion of the world introducing Polly, the magic man malamaji Once again, here's our referee in charge, Alan Huggins, now to give instructions. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled. Centering, gentlemen. Gentlemen, this is for the IBF Championship of the World. I want you to obey my commands at all times, and most importantly, protect yourself at all times. Your belt's kind of low right here. I'll call that fair. All right? Touch him up. They've been verbally sparring throughout. The time has come to fight. The champion, Pony Malinaji, has to be careful not to underestimate the hard-nosed challenger or be over-anxious to impress after the long seven-month layoff. Herman Ngojo, who looks like he's right out of central casting, carved, muscular, has to find a way to diffuse the lightning speed of the champion. Hard not to notice the stars in Ngujo's hair. That, in effect, says that Malinaji may have the magic, but he can't be faster than a shooting star. Always good to have a prop to help exactly. you make your point, isn't it? Even if it's on your head. I've been thinking about it myself. <laughs> and you'd look attractive. Let's see if Ngujo looks to get inside, apply pressure, invest to the body, try to slow Malinaji down for the later rounds. Malinaji, of course, slick, slippery. He'll stick and move. He's clever, able to avoid punches. Gets in and out very quickly. And remember, if he is pressured, he showed a lot of toughness against Miguel Cotto. In fact, both guys gaining a claim and defeat. You know, there are two things that Herman and Gujo in his corner are worried about. One, you can see in evidence. It's a monstrous ring. It was actually set up smaller than it is now. And then the Malinaji promoter said, uh-oh, we need it bigger. Well, it's very big. The mat is fast. And the other thing that Ngujo and his people are worried about, three American judges, three U.S. judges, because let's face it, most people think this fight is going the distance. Yeah, originally it was like a 17-foot ring. Now it's out to 20, and of course, the way Malinaji moves around the 20 feet. Malinaji said he'll put on a boxing clinic tonight. He may not knock Ngujo out, but says he'll punish Herman and show he's one of the fastest boxers in the world. He's got that purposeful jab. He does let his hands go. He likes to mix it up. And he does move around effectively. He says he won't run as much as he used to because now his hand is better. Yeah, the right hand is, is healthier. And he said you can't stand in the pocket when you only can throw one hand. Now, one of the keys to this first round, and you see it,
through round one. There's not been one moment that this match has been waged on the inside. Lovemore Endo had that problem for 12 rounds for the most part with Malinaji. For Ngujo to be effective, he's going to have to fight off Malinaji's chest at least part of the time. Malinaji with a left hook over the top. He is just not an easy guy. Cannot let up against Malinaji. Not a lot of guys want to get in there with him. Not likely we'll see a first round knockout. Each has only one apiece. Malinaji, his first pro fight, and Gujo, his second. Between them, just 14 KOs in a combined 41 fights as Malinaji targets the body. Malinaji's last knockout, August of 2003. 120 seconds left in the first scheduled for 12 for the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship. Malinaji on the attack, has Ngucho on the ropes. Good opening round for the champion. Malinaji's so proud to have drawn comparisons to the legendary featherweight champion of the 50s, the great Willie Peck. Yeah, there are many comparisons, of course. Uh, inside the ring, Willie Pep was a defensive genius and had the excellent jab. Willie Pep in the white trunks. You see him use that jab just as we see Malinaji use it now. Uh, and one other comparison, Pep's family from Syracuse, Sicily, exactly the same town that Paul Malinaji's family comes from. So he's honored to be compared to him. And a couple other fighters that come to mind when you think of him, also okay, Joey Archer that, and Willie Pastrano. So he goes down, you stay down. Okay, baby, beautiful. Very good, good round, very good. Very good, Jam. Nice, nice, stay nice with that. Hey, listen to me, this guy's not in your league, baby. You understand me? He's not in your league. Just stay focused, okay? Stay focused on what you're doing. Former world champion, Buddy McGirt, who trains numerous champions. Malinaji says, hey, Buddy keeps my emotions in check, and he is a very emotional fight. Last two fights, McGirt has been working with him. It has been a very good marriage. They have found an identity for Malinaji, and never was that identity so apparent as in round one. Yes, he boxed. Yes, he moved. But he was a good offensive fighter in that round. Herman, Herman and Gujo has a huge problem here. Until he can get inside and work off the chest of Malinaji, he's going to have a problem in the center of the ring. Pretty good left hook there to the chest by Ngujo. Ngujo, similar in style to Malinaji's last opponent, Lovemore Endo, but a younger version. And remember, Malinaji won that fight by lopsided scores. He dominated. We'll see if it happens again tonight. To the body goes Malinaji with the left. And for what it's worth, one common opponent, Donald Camarena. Both unanimous decision wins, but Ngujo had some trouble with it. He struggled with Camarena early in the match, uh, then found his sea legs, but Malinaji pretty much dominated him all the way through. There are two things that can change this fight on a dime. One would be a right hand by Malinaji. He knocked, out, knocked down Endo with that punch. And the other would be a left hook, which is the punch that Ngujo used to knock down Randall Bailey in his last fight. So those would be the two big punches that might alter this fight dramatically. And there's a right by Malinaji. And in the past, the right hand has been a problem. As you heard in the interview with uh, Malinaji and Jim Gray, nine fractures of the hand, three surgeries, screws inserted in the hand. For a while, he was a one-handed fighter. Stand up. Let's go. Cut it out. Said he got into bad habits with the right. Now trying to be more of a two-handed fighter. Says he's never felt better. Malinaji may be a light hitter, but, you know, often an entertaining uh, boxer because he also does fight, and he, and he can be physical. His power is improved. I guess as the hand gets better, he did drop Lovemore Endo. Now there was an example uh, for the first time, really,